Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Jungkook Hwa Hak Sang Dul. How are you doing today? I hope that you've had a very good week. Well, we are back in we are back in class, and here we are for the fourth week of intermediate English conversation. As you know, the some online semester has been extended, right? It's been extended. So um, we're going to be here a little bit longer. We don't know exactly how long, but we're going to be doing online classes a bit longer. So remember again to upload your homework into the class website if you haven't done it already, because I can't get it from, I won't be able to get it from you uh, in class, I guess, unless you come to my office or leave it in my mailbox. But I think you guys want to stay in home, right? You want to stay in your home. Well, this week we're going to be looking a little bit at the book. We're going to be looking a little bit at the book and we're going to be doing unit two. I love to do unit two in class because I love music and it's all about music and we get to listen to music in class. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do as much with it, but I'm still going to uh, do some stuff with music in this PowerPoint. As you can see in this picture, I have three different musicians. I've got three different musicians because this is a unit about music. First, on the far left side, that man, I guess everybody knows who he is, right? Yes, that's right. It's Johann Amadeus Mozart. Mozart, the genius uh, composer from 18th century Austria. I think you guys all know him, da, 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 right? Um, yeah, so next I have one of my favorite musicians there. Her name is Midori. She's a kind of Japanese punk, jazz, rock and roll. You probably don't know her, but I think she's pretty cool. Her band is pretty cool. They broke up. They finished playing a long time ago. But I always like letting my students listen to her music because uh, I think she's so cool and fun and her music is so unique. And last, I have up there um, the American jazz musician Miles Davis. Miles Davis, really one of the most famous jazz musicians, a pioneer, a beginner of the jazz genre. Um, recently, Netflix just made a documentary about him, the Miles Davis documentary. So if you have Netflix, please check it out. He's got a fascinating life and his music is very calming and peaceful. So, yes, here we are. Uh, let's begin. Today's agenda, what are we going to talk about today? Well, um, we're going to go over our homework. You remember that we had homework last week, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to look at Unit 2 and do some of the pages in Unit 2 in the book. We're going to talk about agreeing or disagreeing with statements. I think it's a kind of problem area for many Korean students, figuring out how to agree or how to disagree with a statement. That's by using the statements, so am I, so do I, neither am I, or neither do I. Okay, this do verb or am verb here is called uh, an auxiliary verb auxiliary verb. So we're going to talk about that today. I think it's a problem area for students. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about that. Then we're going to talk about irregular verbs and the simple past just a bit. So just a few things on here, but they take a little bit longer than some of the other things that we do. And um, well, uh, I wanted to have some time to answer you guys' emails in the PowerPoint this week. But uh, I saw so many of you wrote really interesting emails and you wrote me questions in your emails. Uh, I want to talk about those things. I want to talk about what I'm doing these days, but I didn't have quite enough time. I'm going to try to do it next week because there's a lot of things I want to say to you guys from your emails. So let me take a look at them again and I'll prepare something for the next PowerPoint next week. Don't worry, even if I didn't answer your email, your email about your um, your kind of introduction about yourself and that I had you guys do two weeks ago for homework, even if you didn't do it, uh, even if you didn't get a response from me, uh, I, I saw it. I promise 
I already saw it, and I'm going to give you a grade for it, a participation score, and I'm going to try to answer some of the questions that occurred a lot. I'm going to try to answer them in our next class. Um, I want to talk about food and music and like what I'm doing these days because I ha I notice I have some things in common with you guys and sometimes you said something that uh, I was really interested in. So I want to I want to get to that. Okay. Okay. So the first thing I want to ask you guys is how are you holding up? How are you holding up these days? Holding up. What does that mean? Hmm. Well, holding up is a kind of English expression. It means, are you feeling okay? Right? Are you guys feeling okay? Everybody, you've been stuck inside of your house probably for a long time. I know I saw a few students on campus, not too many though. Are you feeling okay? Are you holding up okay? Are you getting enough exercise? These days start to feel kind of tired pretty easily, right? Because we're not able to exercise as much as we should be. It exercises, as you guys know, sports majors know, exercise is important not just for your body, but also for your brain. Are you getting out? Are you getting to do exercise? Well, I can't go to the gym. I don't want to go to the gym, but I do go to the mountain behind Namsul University sometimes. There's usually not very many people there, so I don't have to get close, so I'm still practicing social distancing. How do you guys exercise while still practicing social distancing? Do you do it? I'm sure you do. I'm sure you find a way. Are you able to meet friends and family? I'm not really able to meet my friends or family too much, but I do see the other NAMSOL professors around and I do talk to them a bit. Uh, we don't really go out and do anything, but I do get to talk to them, and it's it's important to have somebody to talk to at this time. So that's why I don't mind if you guys send me cacao talk messages sometimes, although I can't always answer very quickly, as I get so many messages these days. But I hope that you're able to have contact with your friends and family. So do you feel gloomy? Are you feeling sad these days, or are you feeling good? Hopefully, if you're getting exercise and eating well and able to talk to family and friends, that you're feeling good. And what are your plans? What are your plans coming up for the next few weeks? Hopefully, in the next month or two, social distancing will start to be lessened a little bit, and we will be we'll we'll be able to get on with our normal lives, right? But they're saying it might take up to a year for everything to get back to normal again, which is hard to think about, right? But I think in Korea, things are getting back to normal a little bit nowadays. What are your first plans? What's the first thing that you're going to do when you start, when we're start to able to go out again? I can't wait to, wait to ride my bike and meet my friends, go out to my favorite Thai restaurant, and as you guys know, who have me before, I really like to play board games. And I can't play any board games. I can't play any sports when we are practicing social distancing, right? So my big plans is to go out, kick around the soccer ball, go to the gym, play board games with my friends, and go out to my favorite restaurants when finally we are able to do something again. How about you? Uh, first things first, before we get into the chapter, I want you to think about the quiz, right? We're going to have a quiz starting April 10th at 12 p.m. So that's April 10th, 12 p.m. At lunchtime, it's going to start. And you can take it until April 15th at 12 p.m. So you've got about five days to take it. You can take it any time during those days, okay? It's on my class portal. You guys know you, you signed up for the class portal last week. So neolms.com backslash Namsol English, the one that we signed up for last week and some of you have already used before. It's going to be 25 questions, 25 multiple choice questions. So you can choose A, B, C, D. So I think that's usually 
uh, a little bit easier for students, right? If we have multiple choice, uh, because it jogs your memory, you can remember something that you, if you if you can read it there, it's gonna pop in your head, right? So remember, this is your multiple choice, and this is not meant to really challenge you. This is to see that you know you come to the class and you've paying, been paying attention and you're participating in the class. This is not my goal is not to give you guys a bad grade here or really really challenge you. Let's make sure that, to measure your participation, to measure how much you are taking part in the class, right? Uh, you're going to have 60 minutes to take it. In my experience, 60 minutes is more than enough time to take this test um, or take this quiz. I'm sorry, it's not a test, it's a quiz. If uh, remember, there's a, once you start it, once you start, then you have to finish it. If you have a problem, your computer shuts down when you're taking it, just send me an email. I'm not gonna give you an F for a technical problem. Just let me know and we, we'll fix it, okay? We will fix it. Okay, and overall, this is your participation score, remember? So total, this is gonna be worth about 2.5% of your final grade. So those are kind of small, but you know, every little bit counts every little bit counts. So 2.5% of your final score, it's measuring how much you participate. It's not a test score, but a participation score. And remember, participation is half of your final grade. Okay. Okay, well now let's look at the homework from page 15. That's the active grammar box. They wanted you to use the present continuous form of the verb here, and they give you the rules. We talked about it a bit last week, but they give you the rules. It's on page 15. It says, A, actions that are happening at this moment, and B, temporary actions that are happening around now, but not at this very moment. So that's A and B. So you should choose for these next ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, which ones are uh, which ones are going are actions that are happening right now, and which ones are happening that are basically happening uh, around now, but not at this very moment necessarily. So number one, I'm studying engineering. I'm studying engineering. Of course, that's B. It's happening around now. It's what you're studying generally now. Even if you're not in class in an engineering class right now, you're studying it uh, in general. Uh, two. Uh, my girlfriend is talking on the phone. Good, that's A. That's A. So, because you really, she really is talking on the phone right now. It's an action that's taking place right now when we say this. And number three, uh, I'm, I'm not talking on the phone. It's the same. It's A, right? We're talking about an action that's taking place. So, it's going to be an action happening at this moment, A. Four. We are not exercising enough. So this might be a little bit tricky for you, but when we say we're not exercising enough, we're talking about maybe, yeah, we're not getting enough exercise in our lives right now. So we are not exercising enough, okay? Um, so that's B, happening right now, uh, happening generally now, B. Uh, number five, are you working in the city? Are you working in the city? So again, that's another thing that it's talking about now. You might be at home in bed or eating breakfast right now, but they're asking you in general in your life, are you working in the city or are you working outside the city? And the final one, number six, what are you eating? Of course, that probably is going to be A. There's some situations where it could be B, but in this case, we mean A, an action happening at this very moment. Okay, an action that's happening at this very moment. So that was the answers to the active grammar box. Hopefully it gave you an idea about what we're talking about when we talk about the present continuous. Okay, and if you look at the next page, uh, the grammar part six, it says, read the active grammar box we already did. And how is the present continuous used in each sentence? Um, so circle the correct choices. I've bolded them here. It should be, I'm taking a Spanish class year, this year. It starts at 7.30 on Mondays. 
Okay, it starts at 7.30 on Monday. So we're going to say the present continuous and then the present simple. And number two, what are you doing these days? What are you doing these days? Well, that should be a big clue there. These days means in general. Are you still studying English these days? Three, Yuko doesn't eat meat. She doesn't like it. She doesn't like it. When we talk about likes or dislikes, we're usually going to say something is a is it's a state of verb. Remember we talked about state of verbs. So when we talk about something that they they, they don't like, then we're usually going to put it. Uh, we can't put it in the present continuous. And for what do you usually do during summer vacation? Do is another one. We often don't put it in the present continuous. And number five, they often go to Costa Rica with friends. They often go to Costa Rica with friends. So if you got some of those wrong, go back at them, take a look, see what you did wrong, and see if you if you if you didn't get it right, you're probably looking at the question a little bit wrong. Look back at the first PowerPoint where we talk about state of verbs, which verbs can and cannot go into the present continuous. Okay, well, let's go on then. Let's do homework. So unit three, if you turn to unit three in your book, it's talking about music on page, I think that's page 17, page chip chill, I believe so. To take a look again, I, I don't have my book with me. I just have my notes about the book because I have the teacher's book, but there are some questions there. Um, well, I like these for doing group conversation. Unfortunately, unless we're able to do like an online class, like a Zoom class or a Google Hangouts class, then I'm not going to be able, we're not going to be able to do that. But I want you to think about these questions. I might ask them on your test. Um, I might give you a homework assignment, but assignment about them. But what are your favorite kinds of music? Think about genres and styles. What is a genre? I think in Korean you call it genre, right? genre. So genus is like a Latin word. It means like family. So what's your favorite family of music? You like rock, pop, rap? Uh, what kind of pop? Pop is so various. Hip-hop, classical, heavy metal, uh, ballad, jazz, reggae. What's your favorite? Do you enjoy live music? Do you enjoy live music? Um, I really enjoy live music, although I've been to so many concerts in my life. I'm getting old and my hearing, my hearing is kind of getting bad. So I do like them, but nowadays I have to wear earplugs to protect my ears. Um, I like these live events because music, how can I explain it? Music, especially the community of music, makes me feel so um, connected with them, with other people, uh, makes me feel happy and I have something in common with other people. It can often make me excited if I'm gloomy. If I can't sleep, it can help make me sleep. Um, what about you? How does music make you feel? Does music ever make you sad? I want you to think about these ideas and write down some ideas about music, concerts, genres, styles, and your experience as a person with music. Okay, my taste in music. Well, I like a lot of different kinds of music. You might say I have an eclectic taste. Okay, eclectic means something along the lines of you like a lot of different things. So if you hear what kind of music I like, you might think that that you know I my taste is just one thing. Oh, this is Georgie style. But I like a lot of different things, and as I get older, I find that I really like lots of different things. So uh, from when I was young, I really I really enjoyed standing out or being different. How about you? 
Do you like to be different or do you like to listen to what everyone else listens to? Well, I have a little song here that I, 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 I videoed this. I took a video of this when I was at a small little concert we call a show in in Singapore. So I'm going to play this video for you. It's kind of loud and kind of crazy. So be careful. If you don't like loud music, just skip it. OK. So what did you think? Hopefully that video worked and you could actually view it and see it. If not, I can send you the link. So maybe it's not quite your style, but for me at that time when I went to Singapore um, and met my friends and listened to this music, I felt very free. And then the music would sound very aggressive. Do you know what aggressive means? Like powerful, almost violent. You might say though it was loud. It's very fast. They're not interested about the slow tempo, right? And it's abrasive. Abrasive means like wants to make people angry, wants to make people excited. Okay. Well, I just had this video. It was recent. So I wanted to show it to you guys because I want you to think about your taste in music, why you like it and how, you know, how it really sounds to you using these different adjectives the adjectives i put down there yong yong sa aggressive loud fast abrasive So uh, for your homework, I want you to write down 10 to 20 sentences about your favorite music and how it makes you feel. Describe its sound and the atmosphere, kibun, of their concert, if you've ever been. And I don't want you to turn this in right now. I want you to hold on to this homework. I think we're going to do something with this homework in the future. So you're not going to turn it in right now. It's not a hurry. It's not a rush. Remember, this semester is not about rushing but i want you to hold on to it for a bit and we're going to do something with it for participation score okay so write down as much information you can about it you can have to be able to speak this at some point remember this is a conversation class it's not really very easy for us to do conversation but we have to find a way to make it work right so this is my plan to make it work i'm hoping we're going to make a video conversation video in the near future about this. So when you have a moment, when you're not studying for quizzes or tests, please write down some information about your favorite music and how it makes you feel. Okay, well, let's look at the next page in the book. I think going on to page, is that page 18, I think, uh, about Lady Gaga. I think we all know Lady Gaga, right? Uh, so it says Gaga for Lady Gaga. Gaga means like crazy or happy to go Gaga, to be in love with. Um, so they're kind of using like a little pun there, a little word joke. So uh, we don't have an easy way to listen to something. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read this to you. This is going to be your listening practice. And then at the bottom, you're going to answer the questions. Okay. You're going to answer the questions uh, in the listening part, in the listening part. Okay. So 
Uh, before Lady Gaga's first album hit the music scene in 2008, she was an unknown 22-year-old singer-songwriter. The album, The Force, brought three number one hints, five Grammy nominations, and sudden worldwide fame for Lady Gaga. Many old people were surprised at her unusual clothes, many of which she makes herself. Crazy hairstyles and wild concerts, she calls them performance art. But her fans love them, along with her very danceable music. So how old was Lady Gaga when she became famous? Who writes her music? Who makes a lot of her costumes? And what does she call her concerts? Okay, so we're going to get into a little bit more grammar for a moment. We're going to talk about irregular verbs. You know that in English, many verbs are easy to talk about the past. However, some verbs are not easy to talk about the past. For instance, the verb uh, talk is very easy. It's a regular verb. If we want to say the verb talk, how do we say it in the past tense? yesterday talk. Well, that's right. We're going to say, I talked, you talked, we, she, he, it talked yesterday. However, many verbs in English are not quite this easy. For instance, the verb speak, as I've written here. Speak is what we call an irregular verb. It's not easy to conjugate. It's not easy to conjugate. Therefore, uh, we have to memorize the rules of how this spelling of this conjugation of the verb speak go. So the conjugation irregular past tense is spoke. I spoke yesterday. You spoke. He, she, it spoke. We, you, and they all spoke. And there are many, many verbs that are like this. For some reason, English has never really made very strict rules about spelling, and therefore English spelling changes a lot. Uh, some things will change and another thing will not change, and it can be very confusing, as you already know, for non-native speakers to learn, right? Very confusing. Okay. Negative, the negative form. So do, the past is did, and the negative form of do is didn't. I didn't work, you didn't work, he, she, it didn't work, we didn't work, you didn't work, they didn't work. Interrogative form, so this means questions. Again, the irregular verb do becomes did, but we reverse its order and put it before the subject pronoun, I, you, he, she, it, we, you, they. So, did I work? Did you work? Did he work? Did she work? Did it work? Did we work? Did you work? Did they work? Pretty simple, you've probably already done that, but there's so many irregular verbs that it can be a little bit difficult sometimes to, to memorize them or to commit them to memory, as you already probably know. In the negative form again, I didn't speak, you didn't speak, he, she, it didn't speak, we didn't speak, you didn't speak, 
and they didn't speak. The interrogative form, the question form, did I speak, did you speak, did he, she, or it speak, did we speak, did you speak, and did they speak? The rules. When the verb ends in an E, the past simple is formed by adding D. So care becomes cared. Pretty simple, right? Pretty easy. That's why we call it the past simple tense. When the verb ends in a consonant, that's anything except A, E, I, O, U, plus a Y, and add I, E, D. So study becomes studied. We drop the Y and add I, E, D. So studied, carried, married, hurried. These are all words where we're going to drop the Y and add I, E, D. Got it? Again, another thing, I know you already know it, you reviewed it for many years, right? But I find students, even when they know this very well, they'll make these mistakes again and again, especially if they see an unfamiliar word or a word that's used in a context that they're not used to, that they're not used to. Okay, and the past simple is used to talk about an action that took place in the past, right? We already know that. Very basic. Something that happened yesterday, the day before, 10 years ago, a thousand years ago. So he got up, paid the bill, and left. Got is the past of get, paid is the past of pay, and left is the past of leave. All irregular verbs. I didn't read the letter. I just gave it to Lee. So didn't read. Read is the past of, read is the past of read. However, we're going to put do, the auxiliary verb, into past tense here. So do becomes did, negative, didn't. And gave is the past of give is also an irregular verb. What did you say? Of course, we've already been over it many times. Did is the past of do. And say, of course, we don't have to put it in the past tense because the auxiliary verb do is already been done for us. So this is a part that's very confusing where we have do, these auxiliary verbs in here. We do not need to put them into the past tense only do the auxiliary verb, not the main verb in this case. So probably I'm going to put a question like that on the quiz or on the midterm test because I like to make it a little bit tricky. It is something that you need to remember because it's a kind of continuing problem that pops up in the non-native speaker's speech. So talk about a state continued for some time, but it's now finished. So we use the past, simple past, in this, in this way. So I went to school in Scotland. Did she really work there for 10 years? Or to talk about actions that happened regularly in the past. I often played tennis with her. They never went to the cinema when they lived in the country. And words that we can use with this, with the past tense often, yesterday, yesterday I went to the cinema, two days ago I studied English, last week I got in a fight, last month I graduated, last year I worked in an engineering firm, in 2005 I was in university. Okay, so these are words we can frame our sentences with. 
That's simple, I think, is a very easy concept, but again, remembering the irregular verbs is a little bit more complicated topic. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more today because it's something that's in your book and it's something that will probably be on your test and something you definitely uh, you need to remember. You need to remember for, a few, for the future. But let's move on for a moment. Let's look at the active grammar on page 19. The active grammar box under gate, Gaga for Lady Gaga, on page 19. They're down there way, way, way at the bottom. So number one, it says uh, use the simple past for completed actions in the past. So number one, she, she changed her name. Changed. We just add ED. We just added D, right? She didn't fit in at school. So again, the auxiliary verb do gets put into the past and put in negative and fit doesn't change. And what does didn't fit in? Well, didn't fit in means she stood out. She was a person who liked to stand out. She was different. And where did she move? Where did past tense she move? Page 20, complete the dialogue with the correct form of the simple past. So on page 20, it asks you to fill these in with the correct forms of the simple past using the irregular verbs. So it should say, A, where did you grow up? When I was very young, we lived in Miami. When I was 12, my family moved to Chicago. I didn't like it at first, but when I was a teenager, I loved it. Did you go to college when you graduated? No, I didn't go to college until I was 22. First, I got a job in a clothing store for a year and saved up some money. Then I traveled. After that, I went to college. Okay, so now it's kind of hard to do these because you guys can't answer the, you can't answer me, but it might help for you to, before we start it, maybe to pause the video and then you can do it by yourself and then check your answers, you know. But for now, what I want you to do is I want you to do page 21, the vocabulary and grammar for homework. As you guys know, I'm not taking grades. I'm not taking grade for this kind of homework, but I am going to give you guys some participation things that I want you to do. I'm taking points for your uh, for your email and your your quiz is going to be a kind of participation points as well that you're doing things. OK, so we have to change the format of the class just a bit. OK, so here I have prepared some small portion uh, where I have a couple of clips from some shows using some expressions, so do I, neither do I, neither will I, so will I, and so on. These are expressions in English to show agreement or disagreement. And the first clip is from the animation Futurama. Maybe you know it. It is by the creators of The Simpsons. Is, well, used to be one of my favorite shows. So let's 
let's watch. Hopefully you can see this. If you cannot see it, that means it didn't work and you can check for a link underneath the video, but I think it's gonna work. So let's begin. We are reasonably satisfied with the events we have seen. Overall, I would rate it a C plus. Okay, not great. As a result, we will not destroy your planet, but neither will we provide you with our recipe for immortality. So he says, we will not destroy your planet, but neither will we provide you with our recipe for immortality, the recipe for living forever. So neither will we. So also we will not. That's what it means here. Okay. The next clip is from a, sh a show you probably know as sitcom called Big Bang Theory. So let's listen to that. Maybe. Why can't she get her own TV? Come on, you know how it is with breakups. No, I don't. And neither do you. So, you know how it is with breakups, breaking up with your boyfriend or girlfriend. He says, no, I don't. And neither do you. So, I don't know. And neither do you. Okay, so we know that um, neither Sheldon can, cannot get a girlfriend. So, of course, neither of them know how to break up with a girlfriend. Okay, the next clip is from the IT crowd, which is a kind of British version of Big Bang Theory. I never know what to say to people at funerals. No, neither do I. I'm terrible. I never know what to say to people at funerals. Neither do I. I don't know either. I'm terrible on what to say at funerals. This is a kind of uncomfortable situation. So he says, neither do I. It's doggy time! Bye-bye! <laughs> Bye-bye! I don't believe it. Neither do I. I don't believe it. Neither do I. Again, he's showing his agreement with that statement. Uh, it's a negative, but he's agreeing with it. I don't believe it, neither do I. Of course. Hang on, take my clothes off. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm confused. Well, so am I. I'm confused. Well, so am I. I shower twice a day and wash my hands as often as I can. <laughs> So do I. But you're a dentist. He's nuts. And the next clip is from a science fiction show I used to like called Deep Space Nine. It's on Netflix, but you guys probably didn't watch it. It's from when I was in high school. I like it and it has some good English sentences. Didn't you ever do anything foolish to impress a girl? I may have. Jake's a nice boy. So's Nog. You don't work here. <laughs> yes, well, apparently neither does anyone else. When my father finds out, he won't be happy. Neither will mine. Thank you. We are reasonably satisfied with the events we have seen. Overall, I would rate it a C plus. Okay? Not great. As a result, we will not destroy. Okay, so we have some examples here. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about agreeing or disagreeing. Feel free, watch the video again if you didn't get it all. And it's not important that you understand all of the vocabulary, but just to know when and how they're agreeing or disagreeing with a sentence.
So look at these sentences and the responses and then choose the correct words in the rules. So um, we're just going to look at the rules right, right now, right? So the rules is we use so plus the auxiliary plus the verb to agree with statements. So I really love traveling. Great. So do I. So do I. So so do I. I, I so do I really love traveling. Okay. We use neither plus the auxiliary plus the verb for negative statements. So I don't go out much. Fantastic. Neither do I. Neither do I. We use I plus a positive auxiliary to disagree with a negative statement. So that's the next conversation. Uh, I'm a vegetarian. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't like cycling. Oh, I do. I do. So that's the uh, positive auxiliary. I do. Okay. And we use I plus the negative auxiliary to disagree with an affirmative sentence. So I'm sorry, that's a little bit wrong. That should be conversation four. I'm a vegetarian. Oh, I'm not. Okay. So I plus the negative auxiliary. I am not. I'm not a vegetarian. I am a vegetarian. I'm not. So if you wanted to agree with I'm a vegetarian, what would you say? I'm a vegetarian. Oh, so am I. I don't like cycling. Neither do I. I don't go out much. I do. I really love traveling. I don't. Okay. So remember these rules is the kind of question I'm definitely going to ask you in the future. So how about this one? I haven't got money. Look at the picture. Look at that picture. If I haven't got money, what should it be? What's the answer? Whoops, uh, it could be, I do have money. I'm not in love with you. What's the answer? I am, right? I am in love with you. I can't dance. Well, I can, or she can. I can't sing. What's he going to say? The dog can't sing either, right? So what's he going to say? Neither can I. I'm cold. I'm not. Of course, the devil's never cold, right? I'm not fast. And the sloth is going to say what? Neither am I. I smell bad. Of course, the toilet would say, so do I. I can fly. The superhero is also going to say, so can I. I can draw. I can't. I don't like you. Oh, he might say, neither do I, right? I don't like horror films. I do, of course, the horrible monster. Sorry, guys, if that's a little bit scary. 
I have got eight eyes. And what's he going to say? So do I. I haven't got time. Neither do I. I have got a long beard. I don't. I am very talkative. The parrot says, so am I. Okay, so please remember that for next time. For now, I want you to upload your profile if you haven't already done it. Start the quiz on April 10th. It should be up. And don't forget that the, the midterm test will be on the week of April 20th. It will be on everything that we've covered so far. Okay? Questions, send me an email. Try to get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget, have a great week and stay healthy. Uh, love to hear from you guys. Send your emails. Send your messages. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.